Hello everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be dealing with an internal force problem and we're going to be trying to understand what internal forces are and why we need to use internal forces to solve problems like so. All right, so we have a question that says determine the normal force, shear force, and the moment at point C. And we have a normal member supported at two points, the roller and the pin, and we have loading applied to it. And we have this point C, right? So we want to know the internal forces at point C. So let's try to think back. Let's think back to when we were doing trusses, right? And we took method of sections or we did method of joints. And we would find out what those internal forces were inside of each of those members so that we knew if they were tensile or compressive, right? Well, now, since we're not dealing with a specifically a truss problem, we have to consider bending moment as well and shear force. It's not just axle forces that we're concerned with anymore. So let's explain it. What are internal forces? We have three different types, okay? So we first have axle forces where let's say we have a force going like this and a force going like this at our member. And we would classify each of these with the letter N, right? For normal force. And pretty much all this means is that we have a force acting parallel to the length of the member, right? So in other words, we can consider this as our F at X component if we're dealing with you know a 2D problem similar to this, or we can think of axial forces as forces that run parallel to our length of the member. And then if we're thinking about shear forces, let's first think about what a shear force is, okay? So if we had a force like this and a force like this, uh, hold out your pencil for a second and apply forces just like that to the member, you can imagine that the pencil is going to want to break. Hopefully you didn't press too hard and actually snap the thing in half. But pretty much all a shear force is, is a force that's going to act parallel to your cross section, but perpendicular to the length of our member, okay? So what does this mean in our case? Uh, for our convention, we're going to consider them at the cuts, right? So if we had shear forces applied here, we would consider them as Fy components. And remember what shear forces are because we have a perpendicular force acting. The last force we need to cover is the moment. And we already know that that is going to be defined by M. And let's imagine we apply moments at our cuts over here and over here. And we can imagine the way these moments are acting are going to deflect this member that we have downwards kind of like this, okay? And what does this mean if we think about this a little bit deeper? On the bottom face of this member, it is being stretched out. So that means it would be tensile on this face. And if we imagine the top face, it is being squished together. So we have compression on that top face here. So once we put all of this together, we can actually articulate it into one giant convention for all of our problems in the future, okay? So let's look at our axle force first. And our axle force will be considered positive if it is creating tension in the member, so pulling that member apart. And then with shear force, represented by V, I should have put there, shear force is going to be positive if it's creating a clockwise rotation for that member. Uh, so you can imagine the way these forces are kind of acting. We have that couple moment that is creating that rotation, right? And then lastly, we have the moments applied as well, like this, moment and moment. Our moment is considered positive if it is creating compression on that top face, okay? That's why I had to explain this little section over here, right? So... Why do we need internal forces in the first place? Why did I waste so much time explaining all these forces again? Well, internal forces are important because we need to be able to gauge whether a member can sufficiently support loading at a specific point in our member, okay? So this problem could, could have took the point anywhere, but we are curious with point C. We just wanna know what the loading conditions are gonna be at that point specifically. So if we take a section at that member, we can actually determine whether the loading is going to be sufficient or not uh, based on you know factors of safety which we would get in much later in the course uh, but just for now 
knowing that we can analyze any point on this beam to figure out what the internal forces are is super crucial to ensuring that our structure is going to be safe uh, for any type of loading, right? So what do we need to do? We need to consider method of sections, right? I've been talking about taking a cut here so that we can expose these forces, right? It's similar to trusses. Except now we're considering this new convention, right? And once again, it's written right here. But if you think about, you know, practically why why this convention works in the first place, let's imagine we we took a cut, okay? And we had a member kind of like this, and we took our cut right here. If we imagine that these forces were over here, and these forces were over here, they would cancel each other out, right? Because you have opposing normal forces, opposing shear forces, and opposing moments as well. So we're going to actually cancel out everything at that cut, which means that the cut is actually in equilibrium, okay? Remembering our three equilibrium equations. So we know that we can actually take a cut anywhere along this member, as long as we can solve for our unknowns in that problem, right? So enough with the rambling, let's get on to what we need to do to actually solve this problem. Okay, so now we know everything we need to get solving, but how do we begin solving in the first place? Uh, the first instinct I have for any internal force problem is going to be to solve our reactions first, because they'll prove to be super helpful uh, whenever we take our section and we need to know the reactions at a certain uh, section, right? So what do I see? I see an AY here created by this roller. I see a BY here created by this pin and also a BX but actually it will be zero because there's no X forces applied in this problem. And we can also go ahead for the sake of simplicity, solve for FR, which is the resultant force created by this distributed load. And we've done this before, right at the start of the channel. And to simply do it, we know FR is going to equal the height of the distributed load, which is going to be three kip per foot, multiplied by the span it covers, which is six feet. And that is going to give us 18 kips as the resultant force. And now we can go ahead and solve for these Y components, right? So let's go ahead and take the moment at B just for the start. And let's solve for that A force first. And we can do that by taking negative AY since it's going clockwise around B. That's going to be nine feet away. And then we have the positive FR, which we solve for, which is 18. And we have the 9 plus 6 divided by 2, which is 3. So that's going to be 12, okay? Solving for AY, we are going to be left with 24 kip, okay? And then now we can take FY to solve for the B. And what is B going to be? You see what I did there? Negative BY plus AY, which is 24. And we have the FR, which is 18. So we know BY will equal six kips. So now we can go ahead and take the cut at C to figure out you know, what our internal forces are gonna be at this section. But when we take this cut, we wanna pick the simpler side first to analyze, uh, similar to method of cuts for trusses. Uh, it just makes our lives a lot easier when we take, uh, take the solution of the problem, right? Okay, so now we've taken a cut at the member and we can see we're following our convention here. We have our axle or normal force here, our shear force, and our moment created all at cut C, and we have our reaction solved from before. So this is a pretty simple section that we've taken, which makes our lives a lot easier to solve for each of these forces. We can see that NC is going to equal zero because there's no other X components in this problem. We know that VC is going to equal six kips, and we've drawn it in opposite at direction from the reaction. So that means that you know, our assumption in our convention is correct and we can keep that sign positive. And we have finally the moment to solve for, which we have to take the moment from C so that we can solve for the reaction. So if we take the moment at C following our convention, we have a negative moment at C minus the BY, which is what? Six kips times 4.5 feet. Solving for MC, you'll be left with negative 27 kip feet, meaning 
that the direction that the convention assumed that our moment would go in is actually the opposite. So it will be looking something like this. And we can keep this negative in our final answer just to avoid confusion because our drawing states that we have drawn it this way and our equation also states that we have drawn it that way as well. So we just leave the negative as it is and we box our answers and call it a day. So that's our final answer for this problem and I hope that helped.